Raiders from the Sky. Slave Maker Queen select for aggressive host colonies. So uh, we are here at the House Preserve in upstate New York near Albany. That's where I conduct all the outdoor experiments. And I am Tobias Hamminger and I'm currently doing my um, PhD at the um, LMU in Munich. And I'm Andreas Mullmeier and I'm also doing my PhD at the University of Munich. Andreas and Tobias work on the interaction between two ant species. The smaller one, to the right, is the host, Temnothorax longispinosus. The larger one, to the left, is a parasitic ant, a so-called slave maker. Here you see the host species with their brood. They have to be alert, because the slave maker ants can try to steal these brood items. Also, slave maker queens, who can fly, can take over an entire nest. Um, what we found in the lab last year is that the presence of the slave maker um, has an influence on the aggression of the host species. So if the host species encounters a slave maker, they become more aggressive for at least a couple of days. So this year we're kind of interested if that effect also happens in the field or it's just something that happens in the lab. It was the summer of 2010. Andreas and Tobias were ready to start their field experiment. The first step was to collect ants. Now here we are collecting ants and afterwards we're going to bring them to the lab and measure their aggression. The ants live in acorns. So to find the ants, they opened a lot of acorns. Hey, Longy. Mit vielen Arbeitern und Königin. And now trying okay. to get all of the ants into the subblock. So we can count later all the larvae, then count all the worker. Then we will do a crashing test with them to get kind of the base aggression value. And after you have done that, you will put them in bowels and bring them back out in the field. The second step is to bring them out into the field and do a field manipulation and see if kind of the change of certain parameters, um, especially density and presence of parasites, have and has an impact on the aggression of the colony. So, so hopefully we we'll find out how aggression really affects them. At night in the field station, Andreas and Tobias counted all the ants in the nests they had collected during the day, including all the brood items. After that, they determined the aggression level of each of the nests. Tobias explains how that can be done. We take dead ants of a different area, same species, um, stuff it into the colony, basically and then observe them for five minutes and record every single interaction every single living ant has with that corpse. And then we record if it's an aggressive interaction or if it's just interest, like antenation. And in the end, we're gonna calculate the aggression index. Next, they went back to the forest to build the enclosures where the actual experiment would take place. When the enclosures were ready, the ants, now in artificial nests, were released. Now we want to bring them back in the field and we put them now into bowels. We let them move in because they like to move into small places that are dark. And we hope that we will find them again in like two months when we recollect them and then we will test their aggression again. <laughs> we bring the longies back to the field, <laughs> into our little enclosures. <laughs> Oh, the wooden thing is a dowel. It's basically an artificial nest site. Okay. And now I just brought a slave maker back into the field. So there's different treatments here. The enclosure has like four parts. Low and high density. The small ones are high density and the big ones are low density. And then we have a treatment with and one without parasites. The ants stayed in the enclosures in their new nests for two months. After that, they were taken once again to the field station for more counting and more aggression tests. The results were surprising. Yeah, we got some pretty interesting results because um, apparently some founding state mayor colonies uh, liked our density manipulation very much. So um, 
we lost about 20% of our treatment to the fauna colonies. But the fauna colonies that came from outside of the plots were kind of a uh, surprise. So what happened is that the young slave-maker queens who had just had their mating flight flew into the enclosures and took over 20% of the nests in the experiment, driving out the ants that had inhabited the dowels previously. Yeah, this is what happened to a lot of our host colonies. Um, we only found the slave-maker queen and uh, brood left in the dowel. Initially, it was unclear what to do with this unexpected result. It is something really surprising, basically, it's something we didn't expect, you know, it's like one experiment is gone and then just an, another opportunity just opens up, you know, to kind of observe an, an event that hasn't been observed ever before because you cannot plan it. But then they realized that all the data on the nests, which they had collected before the experiment, came in very handy. Yeah, what we did, we analyzed um, how much brood the founding queen was able to take over because we had all the basic data on the amount of brood that was there when we put them out in the manipulation. And now we counted again how much brood the queen, the founding queen of the slave making ant was able to take over and keep. And it seems that the more aggressive host colonies are able to take more brood with them. Because the founding colony queen, the founding slave making queen, was uh, able to get more um, brood out of the nest that were less aggressive. So to summarize this result, when slave maker queens take over a nest, they drive out the adults and try to keep as much brood as they can, whereas the host ants try to rescue their brood and flee. The queens who had taken over more aggressive nests in the enclosures had retained fewer brood items, which means that the more aggressive host ants must have rescued more of their brood. It seems that for the host species, aggression pays off. We are happy that um, we got this um, very unexpected <laughs> but still um, cool result of it. It is kind of sad that the uh, density manipulation didn't work out as we intended, but it's, it's still a very nice result. And if you want to do plan to get such results, I think it wouldn't work out. So we're really lucky to get the result. If you would like to know more, you can read our paper in Biology Letters. Yeah.